Gezu, to our fellow members of Nights on Bikes, and to bikers everywhere. My name is Bear Wozniak of the EWTN Long Ride Home TV series. Fellow Nights on Bikes member Peter Morton and I put this series of biker safety videos together for you at the inspiration of Ace Fagan, the president of Nights on Bikes USA. Peter is a certified safety instructor with both the Motorcycle Safety Foundation and Harley Davidson. So please feel free to share these videos with everyone. We also want to invite you to visit deepadventure.com, the home of Long Ride Home TV, and consider becoming a Patreon donor and help us produce the TV show. When you do, your name is listed in the credits of the TV show and you get all seasons past to all of the episodes of Long Ride Home, plus you get early access to every new episode as soon as we produce it, months before it's released. Once so again, thank you for watching our safety videos. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. I'm coming to you from Waikiki Beach with Peter Morton, who's in Georgia. Uh, Peter Morton uh, and I have decided to do this series of videos together to kind of develop a conversation about motorcycle safety. And we call it Between Two Bikes. But in reality, one of my bikes is in Hawaii, one of my bikes is in Florida, so I'm a long way between the two. And Peter's got, like, I don't know how many bikes in his garage. But uh, we're here with Peter, and we've been going through this series. Peter is um, certified with the Motorcycle Safety Foundation and also with Harley Davidson. He's taught over 500 motorcycle safety courses, but we do want to put this caveat in that we're just two guys talking story. You need to be, uh, be for yourself, decide what is safe and what, what, uh, what uh, safety precautions you need to take before and during your ride. So, uh, Peter, today we want to talk about something I don't think is really important at all, uh, and that's braking. I, you, know, I've, I, you know, you really don't need brakes when you ride in a motorcycle unless you're a chicken. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Now let's talk. Let's talk about. Let's talk about uh, braking. It's really important. I mean, I learned early on as an early rider, especially you learn uh, how important braking technique can be. So, can you give us kind of the the what's up on braking first? Okay. Well, let's talk about what kind of brakes you may have on your motorcycle. The, the uh, there's all all kinds of different brakes that you may have. Uh, braking systems on a motorcycle. Uh, ABS braking, which is very similar to your car, uh, is very, very um, um, popular on motorcycles now. As a matter of fact, that one behind this one here has ABS. And that actually, uh, ABS is, if you think about modern motorcycles are disc brakes. And what they do is they have calipers that squeeze a, um, squeeze the... Um, um, the doohickey? The rotor. Think, Thank think, you. Thingamabob. Thingamabob. Okay, got it. Yeah, the rotor. They actually squeeze the rotor to stop the, the wheel that you're engaging. Now, the problem is if you apply too much pressure on that, the old systems, if you apply too much pressure on that, you're going to lock up the wheel. That's not good. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the ABS, like that one has there, uh, the ABS, what it does is oversimplified. It's the, the calipers are going to oscillate, and they're going to – just kind of like the old way of pumping your brakes. Uh, my wife and I were talking about that uh, earlier today. It's kind of like pumping your brakes, but a thousand times faster. These are and the you, fascinating you, conversations you have with your wife, huh? Yeah, actually it is. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, actually, I was going over some of this stuff using her. As, uh, she kind of just goes on. Uh, yeah. and, you were talking and she was listening, but you were not. not okay, I got it. Yeah, but I'm, I'm so she, thankful I have ABS on my bikes. Yeah. And that saved my bacon, actually. I was coming up to a, a, a couple of times it saved me on, on that bike. Um, the, I was following a, an old pickup truck one time, and, and uh, he didn't have any brake lights, and I didn't know it. And he slammed on his brakes. So that delayed my reaction time just a little bit because I didn't see the brake lights come on. And I engaged those ABS brakes, and I stopped in his rear bumper and mine. You could probably split the quarter in between. So that, that uh, actually saved me, uh, ABS saved me. So my recommendation is if you have an option to, when you're buying a motorcycle, to have uh, the ABS feature on there, do it. Especially uh, in the rain. It's, it's very, very helpful rainy days. 
the the other uh, couple of other of course there's regular standard braking that's what this motorcycle has front brake is front brake uh, front wheel and the rear brake is the rear wheel um, the important thing about braking is you want to do a, a firm progressive squeeze when you're operating that that front brake don't want to lock it up um, and there's a concept uh, called threshold braking uh, what that means is that you want to use those brakes. Let's say that at 100%, you're going to lock up the, the, the wheel. What you want to do is threshold braking would bring it just maybe to 98, 99% without locking up. So know where that that is. So you can go to threshold braking if you need it. Because yeah, sometimes stuff happens and you're going to need that. So, how, so what do you do? Well, go practice. How do you do that? I'm glad you asked, Bear. And what what you do is go into a parking lot. It's not the time to practice when you have that old pickup truck with no brake lights in front of you. And that's not the time to practice your braking skills. The time to practice your braking skills is at least once a season before you start going out and riding. Most of us are seasonal. Uh, is to go to a parking lot and practice your braking. Go to the MSF website. There's, there's, there's plenty of exercise. You know, we're we're seasonal here in Hawaii too. You know that. Yeah, because in the no, in the no, in the winter times the waves come from the north, and in the summer they come from the south. So I I, I totally know what you're talking about here. Okay. Well, in Georgia too, it's pretty similar. We we have I ride all year round too, but it's important to actually find those find those things on your motorcycle. Um, where the, the threshold is, how those brakes operate before you're in an emergency situation and have to find out. And that, that's usually never ends real well. So that's the, uh, oh, the, the other kinds of braking systems uh, that are out there are link brakes and um, uh, let's see, integrated brakes. And what that is, is a portion, when you squeeze the, the front brake, a portion of the rear gets applied, or if you press the rear brake, a portion of the front brake engages so that that's different things too my gold wing has uh, has that so that's the cool. point is you know, know which system you have mm. and how you can deal with it um a lot of old timers will well and i hear this all the time that they'll say that don't use that front brake oh you're going to get in trouble using that front brake you're going to go head over heels if you use that front brake nothing could be further from the truth uh, what usually happens is that they don't know how to use the front brake. What they're doing is they're grabbing rather than squeezing that front brake and grabbing it. And that's when you get in trouble. They'll lock up the, the front wheel and they'll do a premature dismount. That's what you call it? We yeah. call that a Hawaiian we, kick out. Or an unscheduled dismount. <laughs> um, that, but you want to get good at that because if you think about it, where is most of your braking power in the front? Why is that? Because all that weight is shifting forward. So even in your car, the same thing happens in your car. If you don't believe me, take a look at look at your front wheel. Where's all the brake dust in the front? Because of that weight shift, everything is moving forward. It's basic physics, everything is moving forward. So you need more there. Most motorcycles, modern motorcycles, are going to have two discs on the front, one in the back mm. for that reason. You need more in the front. You need more in the front. That's so the key is, interesting. The key is don't lock up. Don't panic. Do that firm progressive squeeze. Squeeze more, squeeze more, squeeze more. And you can stop more efficiently and quicker doing it that yeah, way. Yeah, while, you while you're applying the back brake, too. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. But you want to also make sure that you're not applying too much back brake because either way, too much either one is you're going to lock up. So that, that's a good, good thing to go over right now. If you lock up the rear, which is more frequent, you probably a lot of times you don't even know you're locking up the rear. Uh, the recommendation is, if you can and you're on a uh, pavement, is to leave it locked until you come to a stop. Uh, you might fishtail a little bit, but no big deal. If you lock up the front, what you want to do is release it and immediately reapply properly. Why is that? Well, if you leave the front locked, you've lost all steering. So you want to release and reapply properly. Wow, that's so, uh, so that's, powerful, Peter. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the uh, that, that basically what you want to do. Now, this is for non-ABS motorcycles. ABS right. all you know completely different. But 
for for that what you want to do. I was coming into uh, it was raining and I was going to a class a couple of weeks ago and uh, I, I decided to pull over and put my rain gear on. And what had happened was the um, the rear wheel locked up. And I said, well, and you can feel it. I mean, it, it gets a little squirrely. You can feel it. And I said, well, okay, all my training said, well, all right, all right, leave that, leave that locked. And uh, we'll just come to a nice stop. And by that time, because I was skidding a little bit and fish tailing a little bit, I was, I was going to go under an underpass. I said, eh, maybe being wet's not so bad after all. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I just kept on going. Mm-hmm. Uh, but be careful about it. I know your bike. And th- this was, it was new at the time. Uh, this was one of my newer acquisitions. And so I, I, did not. I violated one of my own rules, and I really didn't test out the brakes when it was wet. I tested them out on dry pavement, but not when it was wet. Mm. So I didn't know that threshold on that rear brake when it was wet. So the points being, yes, te- do it in, in the dry, which I did, but also go out there when it's wet, too, in a parking lot and, and get a feel for that in slower speeds and more manageable conditions. So make sure you're doing that, too. Um, Now, you're going to, there's two ways in an emergency stop that could happen. Uh, One is, of course, in a straight line. And the other is, what happens if you're in a curve and you have to stop? Well, either way, when you come to a stop, you want to make sure that everything is upright and pointing forward. Because the, you know, the motorcycles are really easy to hold up when they're upright. When they're leaned over and you start slowing down, they're really hard to hold up, even the little ones. I, really I, I've laid my bike down uh, three times, Peter. Twice uh, when it was standing still. <laughs> <laughs> and the other about five miles an hour when there was a beautiful girl in front of me that distracted me. <laughs> but, yeah. but, yeah, the going slower at a, at a stop, you have to be alert even then. Keep it upright. The, the, the easiest thing to do that, and what most students don't realize is when you come to stop, not so much in a car because you're on, on uh, uh, two tracks, four wheels, you don't have to worry about which way the wheel is pointing. If you well, just think about a motorcycle, whenever you come to a stop, before you put your foot down and actually stop, make sure that front wheel handlebar is pointing forward and you won't have that problem anymore. Yeah, unless there's a beautiful girl in front of me. No, yeah. Got to be nice. Sort of, no, actually, when I'm in my car, Peter, I keep my even when I'm at a stop, um, I make sure that my my t- my my steering wheel is is properly directed because if someone hits me from behind, it could angle me right off into traffic. So I still so I still do that. But yeah, you got to be alert when you come to a full stop. Keep it upright. Keep it so on the straight, straight line stop. Straight line stop. All you're doing is you're applying your brakes. Everything is straight up and down pretty easy to do. Right? The way where it comes into a complication is if you're in a curve, you're leaned over. So now what you're doing in a curve, you're straightening up the motorcycle and where's the wheel? Wheel mm-hmm. is still pointed in the direction of the mm-hmm. turn naturally. Mm-hmm. Even more so now because you straighten up the motorcycle and the wheel still wants to go whichever mm-hmm. direction you're going. Mm-hmm. But you have to be real conscious or practice so it's second nature to make sure that you're straightening and then square the handlebars and then stop. Mm. Wow. Now there's two ways in a curve that you can stop, two major techniques, and that is just what I said, you're straightening the motorcycle, square the handlebars and stop. You may be going over some lines and that's more of a, um, a quicker stop mm-hmm. you do that way. And But you can also, as you're leaning into a curve, if nothing is real urgent, you can begin braking as you're straightening, brake a little more, brake a little more, brake a little more, brake a little more, still straightening the handlebars when you stop and then you're coming to a stop so there's two distinct ways of doing that practice both of them and that's that's a little bit more of a, a precision um stop you're doing that uh, the second way is a little more advanced so be careful if you're not used to braking when you're leaned over uh try and practice that second practice the first way first that is straighten the motorcycle square the handlebars and then stop um now we went over, oh, uh, also on that, whenever you come to a stop, body positioning is extremely important. Uh, body positioning, what you want to do is you want to be upright, your body is upright, and you're looking forward. 
Now, the reason being is because you don't want to have any surprises. If you're looking down, then everything gets disoriented and you're out of balance. So you want to be looking forward. Keep your eyes moving. That's fine. Um, but you want to make sure that your body is upright and centered. So you're, and that's the way the motorcycle is expecting you to be. So if you are what the motorcycle is expecting, then the motor, you can expect the motorcycle to act properly. That's just that. so well said. Very well said. Yeah. No. Nope. So that's uh, emergency stopping in a straight line and in a curve. Um, now the, uh, let's see. Oh, if you do, if we went over the, the skid and, um, and all that. Now that's a good evasive maneuver, uh, to stop if you can, uh, but it may be more practical. And, and I use more of a swerve when I try to avoid hitting something. Okay. So this stop. is a whole nother thing now. And that is, you know, if, if the braking isn't going to do it, or if you think it's not the most prudent way to do it, how do you swerve? Because there's there's times when I go, yeah, I just not going to stop without having a problem. So how am I going to? What's what's Plan B, uh, or maybe it may be Plan A. Proper way to swerve. Usually, my Plan A is a swerve because you're you're on a motorcycle now, and motorcycles are far more maneuverable, and you can put them in a lot more spaces that you couldn't with a car. So usually, my Plan A is a swerve. And then if, if, plan, if I know that plan A isn't going to work out, then I'll try to break. The important thing is when you're trying to avoid hitting something or missing or trying to miss something, not hitting it, um, is that you want to either break first and then swerve or swerve and then break. Don't do both together because you only have so much traction to deal with. Well, I'll tell you, you what, Peter, when, I was, when I was going that eight, eight to ten miles an hour, I was inside the Diamond Head Crater and I was actually was, was riding with a friend of mine who was a girl in front of me. And um, I hit a pothole and came out of it, and it was falling. I overcorrected it. So there's a certain dexterity to a proper swerve, you know. You don't want to uh, well, over, over do is, the, avoiding a cat and running into a car. You know, you got to – there's a certain prudence to it. <laughs> prudence is a good one. Uh, the, the, the pothole, if you can – it's better to swerve around it. If you can't, then... then well, there was course, a beautiful so. girl in front of me. I keep trying to explain this to you. I didn't see the pile. <laughs> ah, stay distracted. Don't distracted. be distracted. But in, in swerving, all swerving is, is you're going around something. So a motorcycle is a lot more maneuverable. And you can... Uh, the technical definition of a swerve is two consecutive counter steers. First one to avoid and suppress in the direction of the, the way you want to go, that's to avoid hitting the obstacle. Second is the press the other way, that's the, the second press to regain your path of travel. So it happens real quick. It's all done in the lower part of your arms. Your body is upright, just like you're stopping. Your body is upright and you're looking forward. And look where you want to go, not what you want to hit. You don't want to hit. Right. So you're looking where you want to go. So you're if I'm, if I'm swerving this way, I'm going to press and then press to recover. I see. So you're actually pressing the bike, but you're you're remaining upright. Your body is upright and stationary. Interesting. Again. Mm. Yep. Your eyes are ahead. Mm. So and it's all done in the in your with your forearms. Not don't put any shoulder into it. You don't have time to do that anyway. So it's really just a it's really kind of a counterpunch. Mm. So you're press and press to recover. Uh, the again the important thing is when you're doing that whatever evasive maneuver you're doing is to make sure that you're not braking and swerving at the same time because you don't have enough traction to do that. So separate the two. Either brake first and then swerve or swerve and then brake. Either way. And there are, so that, sometimes when the, there are sometimes when there's an obstacle in front of you, something comes up, and the best thing you can do is just hold on tight and go right, through, go right over it. And minimize the damage. Right. Because yeah. swerving yeah. could just could make matters even worse. So. It's a it's yeah. a break, swerve, or just keep going straight. Yeah, well, I, I had a um, I had to make a decision. This was years ago. Um, on a, I was on a Goldwing. I was coming in Central Georgia, and I, it was a beautiful day. And there was a, a lake to my right with a, a berm, and I was I was just really in the groove, and it was it was a great 
just a great run out by myself. And uh, all of a sudden, it was here comes the biggest deer I have ever seen in the middle of the road, just kind of trotting, trotting along. And all of a sudden, the deer just stopped, turns its head, and looks at me. And I had very little time to recover from that. And what I did was hit the brakes and swerved and almost missed the deer. <laughs> I hit the, the hindquarters of the, of the deer, uh, but I also kept the bike upright. There you so go, it, it, right there. Oh, that, yeah. Tell us again, so you're, you're approaching it, suddenly there's a deer. Yeah. You're doing a swerve, but you're keeping, you're, you're upright, you're just, you're just using your forearms, but your body still has its COG. It's center of gravity well, my, where it needs to be. So it can up. Right. My training kicked in. So I scrubbed off some speed as much as I could. Then I went into a swerve maneuver and then an upright. And when I uprighted, I just clipped the hindquarters of the deer on my left side. Unfortunately, on the goal wing, uh, all the electronics are in the front and the, the front was destroyed. So the motorcycle was totaled. But the, the, um, the important thing is, though, that these maneuvers, when when you practice them and you don't even have to think about it, they'll save your life someday. And it certainly did mine that day. It's very interesting because having you breaking it down, I do realize when I do the swerve, it definitely is. My COG is still in center, but I'm using my forearms to make the bike move under me. So I still have all, all, you know control of it. My big question is, um, the gall wing's big enough. Did you put that deer on your bumper of the gall wing and take it home? Or did you take it? it kind of did you take it? I took the uh, I took the motorcycle and well I, the, the motorcycle got it was just we put it on a trailer and it was destroyed and the uh, really wow how were you how were you Peter I was fine because uh, I again I was upright and the, the motorcycle never tipped over it was always on 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 the on road uh, but the whole left side was was bad and, and the, how was the deer the, the only thing that happened to me was that the mirror had came off and hit me in the shoulder in the deer. The deer, I, I hope, die the slow, painful death. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> but the, the saddest the part of that story the isn't you or the deer. It's your motorcycle. I mean, that makes me want to have a tear yeah. here. The deer actually scampered off, so I really don't know what happened. Mm, to it. Mm. Um, it was it limped off, actually. But it was, um, so be careful. There's, there's two lessons there. One, learn how to swerve, learn how to stop. Or three lessons, I guess. And also be careful of animals. Because uh, mm -hmm. deer, in particular, in Georgia, they're they're plentiful. When you're at sunrise and sunset, be careful, right? Yeah, they travel in. Uh, they travel. You know, usually they, they travel in herds. So usually there's one, and the rest of the family's coming right behind them. And it, it, that was not the case here. Our deer here in, in in Hawaii, like in over Molokai, um, they're like more the size of antelope. They're pretty small, but still hitting them at speed would probably hurt pretty bad. You know, not be good. I know Ace Bagley yeah. when he was doing his his thousand mile. Iron butt run, which was really more like 1,100 miles. Before even the hundredth mile, he hit a deer, and really yeah. destroyed him his legs, and actually broke his chassis. He didn't even know that he finished the ride. He took his bike in to get it fixed. He says, "You know, your chassis is just being held on by a bolt here. That's all. It's the frame is cracked." So, anything else about swerving before we break away? Um, no, that's pretty much it. Uh, go in the parking lot and practice and do it at different speeds. So if you regularly travel at a higher speed, then you need to practice at a higher speed. Well, here, here's one thing, uh, Peter, that, that, that surprised that. Go ahead, I'm sorry. It's kind of hard to explain uh, to a police officer of what that you're actually swerving, you know, practicing swerving. So be mm. real careful when you, you do that. Uh, but practice swerving at, it feels a little bit different at different speeds. It's actually easier the faster you go because it doesn't require as much input. And the to bike wants a, to stay upright if you, you just keep your COG where it belongs. Uh, the uh, One other thing about braking, and that is I know I learned the hard way, and that is coming down a hill. Um, you know, you better start thinking about braking a lot sooner than you do when you're just on, on the flat because things things it just seems to happen faster. That's part of the, that's part of the strategy we talked about earlier. Uh, you know, look ahead to plan ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, so but it takes longer to, it takes a lot longer on a motorcycle to slow to vis-a-vis -a, -vis a car. You know, to, to bring it to a stop going down a hill, it just seems like there's a lot more momentum built into that into that uh, frame, and you got to think about it much much sooner than you do with a with a car about coming downhill. 
We're talking with Peter Morton. He is a member of Knights on Bikes. We're both members of Knights on Bikes. Um, also members, of course, of the Knights of Columbus. And uh, he's a cast member with Long Ride Home. He's part, he's part of our season that's about to come out. And uh, you can find out more about um, Deep Adventure Ministries at deepadventure.com. Love to have you go join the Man Cave. Peter and I are a member of Bears Man Cave where we have – Every two or three weeks, we have a Zoom video chat, and we just share with each other in a secret Facebook group what's going on in our lives and encourage each other. And uh, we've got so much going on at Deep, Adve- at, at Deep Adventure Ministries. We have the Morning Ocean Sunrise Catechism, which Peter is part of uh, on Facebook Live. We have the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel, which has got tons of stuff, not just uh, the motorcycle stuff, but a lot of other stuff. We have the Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak TV show and the Bear Wozniak Adventure Radio show, which is heard on EWTN along with the TV shows on EWTN TV. And uh, you can watch it, uh, the video version of that, too, if you go to deepadventure.com and subscribe to our newsletter. Whew, I got all that out, but that's what my social media people tell me I have to do. Peter, thanks very much for the excellent every, – every time we've met, uh, I've learned pro, a profound lot of more new information. I hope that's been the case for everybody else. You want to say how great a host I was? Oh, you're a great host. Okay, <laughs> I didn't interrupt you too much, at least, right? A great host because you didn't interrupt me at all that yeah. much. So that was good. Yeah. Uh, until next time, it's Peter Morton and Bear Wozniak. Viva Cristo Rey! Cristo Rey! Peter Morton, I want to thank you for your commitment to Jesus Christ, to the Catholic faith, to Nights on Bikes, and also to motorcycle safety, and for considering some of the things that we've shared with you on our video. We also want to invite you to visit deepadventure.com. It's the home of the EW10 Long Ride Home TV series, and we invite you to become a Patreon donor. When you do, your name is listed in the credits of the TV show, and you get an all-seasons pass to all of the episodes, as well as early access to every new episode as we produce them. EW10 provides a limited amount of funding for our TV show, so we count on donors like you to help us produce the show. Thank you once again for joining us for our safety briefing.